Welcome back everyone, it's Staring from Staring Gaming here. Today we're going to run the Everboom. Before we get into that, I'd like to remind you, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, and also hit the subscribe button to let you know when I get new videos out. Let's get right into it. As you see, the Everboom actually has four bosses and a bonus boss. We're going to do all of them today. And we're going to start by taking the left path. I'm out of range. I need to do it. Now you see you can actually avoid these dread petals as long as you don't get too near them to cause them to aggro you. And the bonus about this dungeon is you can mount up for most of it. So this makes it much easier for you. There we go. Higher height on a mount. Now there are, I guess, you consider some mini bosses like Garden Root and this Mind Mind Mindragora. And I believe there's a quest from the end that actually requires you to get. I know. I believe that's over here. Now, as you see, our first boss is Witherbark. Now, to actually get this boss to activate, you got to kill all 11 of these ads here. So we're just going to... Well, not all 11, but you I would count them because you're going to have to kill them anyway. They're a patrol. But you need to free up these orbs in order to get the boss to turn us. No! To be he will awaken. We have not yet purified the water. Oh, and if you do by off chance have the trading post, you can get some of these items like this to drop. We are all doomed. Basically, if you get the all the items you need to activate the bot there, you get a free auction house in your garrison. Let's bring up Witherbark's abilities. Now we are on heroic mode, I won't deny that. Now Brutal Bark. His bark comes dry and brittle, stuns him, he takes an increased damage by 100. Now this only happens once he runs out of water which you see here and it'll only go away once his energy bars are refilled now parse grass will release a torrent of natural energy doing nature damage to everyone in front of him in the cone uncheck growth it'll move towards a player you'll see what it looks like it's little vines creeping towards you and if we reach you a growth erupts many a poison vapor doing nature damage every second in the area now, since we're on Heroic, he can continue casting this even when he's afflicted by Brutal Bark. So you need to be paying attention. Now, if a globe happens to get to one of these unchecked growths, it will become a mob that you'll have to contend with while doing the boss fight. Now, agitated water. Water will erupt from this lake here. Launching towards the players because in, in a pan pack it'll do frost damage to all players within three yards of impact. Now the globes will slowly be forming out of this lake, heading towards the boss and these unchecked growths. Upon reason zero health, the globe will inflict frost damage to all players. So you can't destroy these orbs because you don't want him, as long as you can man manage, don't want him getting back up to full energy here while he has brittle bark so as you can see he's checked ungrowth unchecked growth on me and these little vines that are following me and now as you see there's that as you can see his water bar here goes down pretty fast so And 
And now, Brutal Bark, and here are the orbs you gotta be aware of. You don't want any of them getting to you. Uh, as you can see, Water Management is actually achieving here, where if you defeat him without allowing him to replenish any of his Aquarius energy. So basically, you have to make sure he, not even a single orb gets to him. Which the easiest way is to pull him as far back as you can away from the lake. That way you have more time to contend with the orbs. Now we're going to see if we can get past these ads without pulling any. Oh. Oh, too soon. <clears throat> Let's get onto a higher mount so I can see him. There we go. The forest closes in around you. You will never escape. These are the ancient protectors. You got Life Warden, Herf Shaper. Do. Now, you could do these guys in any order, but preferably people tend to do the Life Warn since he's the healer, Earth Shaper since he's a caster, and then worry about the last guy. A Life Warn here, he can hit random players with nature damage. You'd also heal allies for 25% of the health with revitalizing water, which you should interrupt immediately. Uh, rapid Tides can empower ally, removing cooldowns from all their abilities. Revitalizing Waters are the ones you want to pri more, uh, prioritize on interrupting, and then Rapid Tides. Now the Earth Shaker here has Nature's Rapid, does nature damage to a random player. Bramble Patch, he'll summon this under a random player for 45 seconds. If you stand in the brambles, you take nature damage and have your movement slowed by 55%. Now, Life Warden and Earth Shaper, all their spells are interruptible. Now, for the Earth Shaper's last ability, Briar Skin. He'll protect an alley with briars for 8 seconds. Resistance of damage taken by 75, and you do nature damage every time you attack. Now, Duhu here has Noxious Eruption, which will do nature damage to all players in 10 yards, knocking them back. So when he casts this, you need to run away, or you'll get launched away. Rendering Charge, he'll charge at a random player and wounding them. This makes you take physical damage every second for 15. Now Grasping Find, he'll wrap finds around a random player and pulls them towards him and does a slash attack at them. We're going to go in the order here to take these guys out, but we're going to try to get some of their abilities to go. You befoul this place. There's his water bolt. He's casting Nature's Wrath. The forest shields us. And here is Bramble Patch. As you can see, I got slowed. Now, Vali's water will heal. I return to the soil. I will be renewed. Now you go up this path, you either choose to go left or right. Now if you choose to go right, you'll actually come do the optional boss here. As we'll just call her Call her Zerg. Get the shivers just looking in here. I got a small case of arachnophobia. Missouri here has two stages. Venomous Brood is the initial phase where you'll have to fight a wave of mobs until she decides to come down for you to actually fight her. But she does have to send during phase one. 
Any players or pale orcs within the vicinity gets bitten for significant physical damage. Now, stage two, once eight toxic spiderlings have finally fallen, she will engage you directly. Now, her abilities, toxic bolt can be interrupted, which just hurls toxic blood doing nature damage. Venomous sting, which is a poison effect that can be dispelled if you have the right ability, stings a random player, and the player will suffer nature damage every three seconds for 15. Now, the deadly ability is gaseous volley. She will release her toxic blood in, two for in the form of two missiles at ranged targets. And when they land, they form toxic gas. If you stand in them, you take some massive phys uh, nature damage. Now, consume. She'll try to consume a pale orc, and if she does this successfully, she gets back 25% of her maximum health. So when these pale orcs come out, the Venom Craze, you need to kill them immediately. They have more priority than the boss itself. And their basic abilities are just swipe, which does physical damage in front of all of them to any player. And inhale, they'll take any toxic fumes left over, and they'll get toxic blood. Now the adds otherwise are little spiders here. Toxic spiderlings. The ca this caster's blood burns increases his damage by 10 for every 10 seconds. And on releasing 10, they explode, leaving behind an area of toxic gas. But these guys should go down pretty fast. Now, whenever it does perish, it leaves behind a cloud of toxic gas. Now, if you enter this one, you'll take nature damage, and these venom crazed pale ones will immediately rush these to try to inhale them. Now, the gorge bursters, they fixate on random players. When they explode, they do nature damage to all players. Now, venom sprayers, they just hail, hurl, Toxic blood at random targets doing nature damage. So, to initiate this boss fight, you just gotta destroy some of these toxic eggs here. Apparently, you just destroy one, and that's enough to destroy them all. Now, you see, here's the gorge stuffers. As you can see, they're increasing their toxicity, which gives them a damage buff. It's too far away. We're gonna try to let a Venom Praise one to get there. And as you see, she will descend to try to... And like you saw, the Gorge Burst, the Gorge Burster gets to you, it goes boom. Ooh. Ah, she bit me. She's going to be crawling up there periodically, so if you know, want to know where she's going to drop, just watch up there. You'll see where she crawls. Now let's see if we can get him to inhale this toxic gas. There we go. Now, as you can see, he gets the ability of toxic blood, which every 10 seconds, just like the other spiders, will increase his damage by 10%. Why it's another reason why you want to focus them too. So they get that in them, <clears throat> they get stronger. Now I see killed enough, she'll descend. <clears throat> is her venomous sting and it's not really you can avoid it she'll chase it down while casting it and here's her gaseous volley which you see she just throws that oh I was curious to get that oh, it's not a bad looking shield maybe in a future video I might use a transmog with that Now there's only two of the primary four bosses you take out now left. Archmage Soul. Are riding up to her. As a basic mage, she has access to all mage, fire, frost, and arcane. Now the off abilities here. 
let's just get her activated. And you gotta be watching out for these little spore clouds. They can put you to sleep. No, you can't. It's I can't fight it. Now, the base abilities, these parasitic growths, they're in her brain trying to take control. If she successfully casts this, she gets increased damage and casting speed by 50%. <clears throat> you can you need to interrupt this. Now on heroic, when she switches magic schools, the legendary effects from her prior school will remain, which means she can still kind of cast some of those. Basically, certain abilities will be around that still activate. And on heroic, she has spore image. For every time she casts this or interrupted. This one will continue using magic spells that she's been casting at random enemies. So, Firebolt and Frostbolt, which are interruptible. You can burn these images down pretty fast. Now, Parasitic Injection. Every time she changes her magical school focus, there are ejected parasites in her brain take root even more, inflict increasing her damage done by 25% for each stack of this. So basically, her basic abilities for fire are Firebolt, which goes towards the target, and Fire Bloom, which little Fire Blooms will spawn on the ground here. She'll detonate them, and a ring of fire will come out from them. To avoid the damage from these, you can jump over them. Now, there's an achievement where you jump over so many in, a, I believe, five seconds. I believe it's you need to jump five rings of fire in five seconds. So you would have to let enough spawn for that to happen. Now, when she goes to Frost, she does Frost Bolt. Does Frost damage. And then she'll create a cloud of frozen rain that pelts victims below, doing Frost damage. And for Arcane, she says Arcane Burst, where she'll send a blast of Arcane damage and start doing the regular Arcane damage. We're going to try to see if we can get her to go into the Flee! The vines! They control us all! And see, she's casting fire bolts at me. Ah, I believe that should be. Yep, that would be the sin. The little uh. Yes, fire! Plant. Fire will burn away the contagion. As you can see, she detonates them and they explode, <clears throat> and they will appear at a random player's location. So now she casts parasitic growth. I didn't interrupt it in time, so she still has fire affinity. And as you can see, her haste is in by 50 and her damage. You have to successfully interrupt the next cast of the spell. Surely the cold will make them wither? In order to stop it. But as you can see, she got parasitic injection, which increases her damage. And as you can see, in heroic, these remain. I guess I didn't uh, get a chance to show you arcane. It's just an arcane burst. <clears throat> I want you to feed her. Under Mage Kelsion will come out, and you'll be able to get to the final boss, which is standing right there. Now, this will take you to a, a unique scenic overlook. Now you gotta be careful because once you go through this portal, you can accidentally initiate the boss fight right off the bat. Now, Yanu here. During this fight, you actually have backup from the Karen Tor. Which they all cast these abilities, which you know, Fireball, Flame Strike, Frostbolt, Ice Comet, Arcane Blast, and Arcane Orb. I shouldn't need to explain these if you've been playing WoW well long enough, you know these abilities. Now for his. Yep, it's a his. I want I want to make sure it was a guy. <laughs> Has colossal blow, which 
He'll slam the ground doing physical damage to all enemies in front of you and stunning them for five. This also does area damage in physical way to all enemies. Now, Fauna Life, it will radiate life periodically creating different ads. The Swift Sproutlings does Tender Rip, which will stab and reduce your movement speed. And this actually does physical damage every second, and it will stack. The Mandraga, Mandragona, does Nox Express, which exhales in a cone, does nature damage every second to all enemies in front. Now, the Garden Ancient does Lumbering Swipe, which crushes all players in front of them doing physical damage. Now, Genesis is the ability you want to be aware of. It will create a field of Sproutlings, Sproutlings, which you'll see on the ground, which begins the channel for 15 seconds. When it's complete, any that are still remaining will grow up and become Feral Lashers. Now, in order to trample these, you just got to literally run right over them. Walk right over them, and they're gone. Now, if you don't get them, the Feral Lashlings do Latcher Venom, which spews Venom at the round player doing nature damage. Also, during this fight, you need to be aware of entanglement, which he can do this to a random player or a random Karen Tor battle mage, which will stun them and they'll take nature damage every second until they're destroyed. Now, heroic, this can actually target players. On normal, it just goes after the Karen Tor, but there's an achievement where you need to make sure all the Karen Tor survive. We're gonna go through the portal and get this initiated. The portal is lost. We must stop this beast before it can escape. And as you can see, you go through the portal. We've got its attention. It initiates the boss fight. I'm going to try to Look get out. some of its abilities, as you can see. Colossal Blow. You'll see the cone for it. And now we'll do an entanglement onto one of the mages. Quickly, draw it towards the flames. Now you can see the Karen Tor actually do some nasty damage the to some of these ads. <clears throat> now here's Genesis. To destroy them, you just need to simply walk right over them. <laughs> and as you see the achievement known as Weed Whacker. You defeat him without any Karen Torn Bow Mage dying during this fight. Now, if you think of your horde, they can go and invade Stormwind here. You jump down, you die instantly. This is just to be a scenic overview of Stormwind. But, uh... This has been a staring from a staring Gaming. Asking you to please hit that like and subscribe button. Also share these videos. And not to forget, I also have a Twitch channel which I stream five out of seven days. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video.